Look at my PowerPoint skills. Mwah. Beautiful. Hello, I'm Angel and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you're a subscriber. Today, I'm going to talk about art and history. So let's get to it. As many of you know, I recently moved to Ohio and have been exploring my new home state. And one of the things that I have enjoyed immensely is visiting the museums. While at one museum, I encountered this piece of art. It's entitled Unemployment and it was painted in 1931. I immediately noticed this woman. And while I was looking at the painting, my husband came over and I was like, Ooh, look, 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 a lady of the night. And the docent came over and started having conversation with my husband and I about unemployment, employment, and women. And how during the Great Depression, employment was so hard to come by that there were really only two things women could do. They could be a prostitute or they could work for their family's business. On the inside, I was like, what is he talking about? I'm not an expert on women's history or the Great Depression, but that doesn't sound right to me. But on the outside, according to my husband, I was just like, huh. So I came home and I did some research because what else am I going to do on a Sunday afternoon? <laughs> I've made this timeline to illustrate some of the important factors. At the top, we have the time. At the bottom, we have events, including the percentage of women in the workforce. One of the things that's always bothered me about the term women working outside the home is that it's framed in this way that it's like it's optional, like women have the option to not work outside the home. And that just isn't true. There are certain segments of the population that have never had the option to not work. The choice was either made for them or it was a necessity of their livelihood. I also think that there's a very white aspect to it, this painting has three women in it and all of them appear white to me. And this becomes a theme throughout my research. There is one graph that I will show you here where you can see that there just isn't information for other groups. And I think that that reinforces the idea that working outside the home was something that other women did, not white women, and especially not white women from middle and upper incomes. There have been times in American history that women have been encouraged to go to work. Americans very often remember that women went into the workforce in large numbers during World War II to support the home front. But what is often forgotten is that a similar thing happened during World War I. women went into the workplace, replacing men who went off to fight the war. In 1918, just as World War I was coming to an end, we have the flu epidemic, which kills hundreds of thousands of people. These two catastrophic events drastically reduced the population. Women remained in the workforce for a while. And then in 1929, we have the onset of the Great Depression. By 1930, we see only about 24% of women in America working. And I think that's in large part due to sexism. Women were forced out when the men came back to work and when the a population of men able to work grew high enough to force them out. We also see African-American domestic servants being pushed out of their jobs in order to make room for white people who were laid off from other jobs now suddenly taking employment in the domestic service area because they needed a job. 
Another awful aspect of this history that I had never heard of was the massive deportation that took place. More than half of these people were actually Mexican Americans. And because the federal government is the only entity that can actually deport someone, it came down to the local uh, governments working to encourage people to leave their homes and go back to the homes of their ancestors. And this was called repatriation. The thought was Mexicans and Mexican Americans were taking good jobs from real Americans, i.e. white people, by sending Mexicans and Mexican Americans to Mexico, suddenly all of these jobs would become available and unemployment would go down. All of these efforts were made to push women and people of color out of the workforce so that white men could have jobs. I'm not the only one who hasn't ever heard of this. Uh, apparently it's not taught in many, many schools, which is really frustrating to me because I was born in Los Angeles. I spent a number of years in the public education system in California. I would think that something that had such a big impact on California especially, but America as a whole, would be taught in California schools. And it wasn't, it's just left out. But apparently two thirds of all students in America don't learn this. At the beginning, my question was, is this docent right? Was prostitution and family businesses the only options for women to work outside the home in the 1930s? And the answer, of course, is no. According to the Department of Labor Women's Bureau 1933 report, women had lots of options. And if you look at my timeline, you can see that the women's employment rate is roughly the same as what it was near the turn of the century. Was it great? No, it was the depression and roughly one fourth of the population was out of work. It's not that awful. Opportunities were limited, but they were available. And now I have feelings. I suspected the man was wrong, but because I wasn't a subject matter expert, I chose to be quiet instead of saying something. And I feel bad about that. How many other people has he told that to? How many other people just assumed he was right and have passed that information on to others? I don't think that it was malicious. I don't think that he intended to put false information out into the ether, but there it is. It's out there. And I did nothing to stop it or at least challenge it. So hopefully this video maybe reaches a couple of people who also had contact with the docent and maybe I can make things a little bit right. Is there a piece of art that inspired you to do some research and you learned a few new things? Tell me about it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.